Hello Indie Game fans, 2021 was a pretty decent year for Metroidvanias, all things considered, since while we did not get the highly anticipated Hollow Knight Silk Song, there were a number of phenomenal entries from developers all over the world, a number of which were from non-traditional countries which made me even more excited for the future of this genre. So join me as I take a look at the year in Metroidvanias 2021 mixing in some smaller titles that you might have missed, and the huge cannot miss titles that you absolutely must play. Let's begin with Phonotopia Awakening, a rather underrated 2D Metroidvania adjacent title that is certainly worth a play, but did technically release on Switch in 2020. However, a Steam version was released in 2021, so it is in this list in case you missed it, with this pixel art entry being a must play in my opinion. It does actually remind me of Zelda 2 and Simon's Quest rather than the more modern Metroidvania games in that it's a side-scrolling platformer with RPG elements, side missions, puzzles and so on, but does add in additional elements like fishing and cooking as well. Our next significant entry, if you can believe it, came in March, where fans of the channel will be familiar with Record of Ludos War Delet in Wonder Labyrinth. Since this title has been a mainstay feature on the channel ever since its early access release in 2020, releasing in 1.0 in March last year. It is from the developer of Toho Luna Nights, which is also one of my favorites, and is based on the classic anime series, with this being a tribute to Symphony of the Night in many ways. Needless to say, I love the pixel art, and it does feel very similar to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, for better or worse, making this a no brainer pick. April brought us 8 Doors Our Room's Afterlife Adventure, a Metroidvania inspired by Korean mythology and folk tales, where a heroine enters purgatory in search for her father's soul. The hand-drawn art looks pretty nice, if a little flash gamey, with good combat and music to match. However, while I personally do like the look of this game and the colour schemes chosen in particular, I can certainly see the limited colour palette being a turn-off for some people, so indie developers do be warned. We have seen an increasing number of South Korean developers in the indie game space who have really been making excellent titles, but it's probably due for me to make a video covering these soon. Speaking of limited colour palettes, a mini Metroidvania entry that is certainly worth a play is Trash Quest, one where you play as a raccoon with a gun, exploring a space station in order to get to all of the trash. In a world obsessed with length of games in the hundreds and infinite hours of replayability, the Mini Metroidvania is a great palette cleanser with the tight design of this entry being worth experiencing. Coming up on the midpoint of this year, where we are looking at Lost Ruins, another twist on the Metroidvania formula that self-describes as a 2D side-scrolling survival action game, also coming to us from a Korean developer. While there is an interconnected map and combat, this, interestingly enough, has a little bit of a puzzle element to it, since you do need to equip the right items to get the appropriate resistances for the different scenarios, otherwise you will get killed pretty quickly. Of course, I love the pixel art look of this, where on the surface, this game has all the elements that I look for in games, making it a no-brainer pick. I do like to take some time to highlight smaller games as well, where one of interest is Insect Adventure. Yes, it doesn't have the cleverest of names, nor does it have very many reviews on Steam, and even has an art style that makes it look like a flash game, but I do still think that this is worth a play. You play as a cockroach with a hammer, chasing after his friend who was kidnapped by a lizard man, 
navigating an underground chasm in order to do so, having a fair bit of inspiration from Hollow Knight in a tongue-in-cheek manner. Hello, boys and girls. A game which I did not know quite where to place in my recaps of the year is Fear Monium. The latest release from developer Red Black Spade, who also made the underrated Cat Maze, where it does have an art style that is similar to Cuphead or the 1930s rubber hose animation cartoons. There is a little bit of a creepy theme as well, where you play as a growing phobia in the subconscious of a boy, wanting to evolve and grow in order to become a full-fledged nightmare. The controls are a little floaty in this, but if you can get over that, it's a pretty unique looking title. If you can believe it, that was the first half of the year in Metrovenus without that many notable releases, but don't worry, things are about to pick up, beginning with Estelon Tears of the Earth. If you've been watching the channel, this showed up in my Hidden Gems video which is a crime since this should have sold better, being a retro Metroidvania adjacent title with 3 playable characters. My favourite entry of the year was released in June as well, in the not so indie Ender Lilies Quietus of the Night, coming to us from quite a large Japanese studio where success has every bit to do with the quality of this game. You play as a priestess with the power to cure a blighted land where mysterious rain has turned men and beasts into monsters. You gain a party of fallen knights as you adventure through the world and defeat bosses, which then act as your attacks and traversal ability, with the abstraction of direct control with our heroine making it feel unique. And it also helps that it is a gorgeous looking dark fantasy title that gives us vibes similar to Dark Souls. Speaking of Souls-like games, July brought us the 1.0 release of Eastern Exorcist, which is one to get as well, making my list of the best games of the year, where this side-scrolling action title has excellent combat but might be another Metroidvania adjacent title since the backtracking and interconnectedness of the world is pretty limited. Interestingly, there are two characters with unique story campaigns where it is from a Chinese developer and is all based on Chinese mythology showing the increasing variety of game developers. The Souls-like Metroidvania trend continued in August with Grime, having more Metroidvania elements than Eastern Exorcist in the exploration and traversal. You play as a living black hole, born into a cruel world where, nihilistically, you seek to extinguish life, consume their remains, strengthen your vessel and to break apart the world. The enemies look like they are made out of rock and root, with very unnerving human-like features which is very effective and creepy design, and despite some rough edges, is still worth checking out. Also of note is that this comes to us from an Israeli developer, again showcasing how international indie game development really is. A title which, unfortunately, sort of came and went was Axiom Verge 2, the sequel to a beloved indie game that tried perhaps one too many new ideas and didn't manage to capture the same kind of attention. It is set in the same universe as the original, which was the twist on Metroid, but this sequel has a different art style, a focus on melee attacks, and even made it such that boss fights were optional in this game. Perhaps it was the epic exclusivity, but at least to me, there was very little buzz about this, but I do still think that it's interesting enough to warrant a look. Our next title is basically Metroid, since in Psychron, you don a power suit and explore a research vessel where something has gone horribly wrong, battling enemies and finding out what happened to the crew as you try to find a way to escape. 
The pixel art, while very simple and minimalist, does work for this game, with four different biomes to explore and a variety of weapons and abilities to unlock access to new areas, making this an excellent smaller title. One title that I was pretty excited about is Recompile, a 3D metroidvania which does challenge the definition of the genre, but unfortunately did not take off like I thought it would. It has a very interesting glitchy look, which is part of its story setup and setting, being set in the mainframe of a computer where you play as a program trying to escape deletion. This is pretty underrated to me in that the 3D platforming, third-person shooter combat, hacking puzzles and metroidvania traversal abilities in 3D space combines in a unique way but the pacing is a little off and there are some confusing bits of design but may be a diamond in the rough if you want something new. The last third of the year was filled with some fantastic titles, but I do have to give a very special mention to Tales of Iron, another title that made my game of the year list, so I shall not belabor the point. In some ways, this is a little bit more like Salt and Sanctuary rather than Hollow Knight, with deliberate Souls-like combat, but does have somewhat of an interconnected world with unlockable shortcuts. I love the art and the game is narrated by the voice of Geralt, so of course this is worth a play. Not too much to say on this one, but the Castlevania Advanced Collection brings 4 GBA Castlevania games to Steam which are pretty decent versions and as someone who never played or only briefly dabbled with these, I'm glad that this collection is a thing, although it was surprising that Konami of all people are somehow back in video games, or more accurately, squeezing every dollar out of the IPs that they own, but if this leads us to a new Castlevania game, it might be worth it after all. Closing out September is Tress Bashers, a smaller title that I missed as well but managed to find when doing research for this video. It has a spooky theme which was in the lead up to October where you bash different monsters with your baseball bat as you travel across the land. Nothing too complex in terms of lore or story but a very interesting title especially with the square display reminding me of games on the Game Boy Color. Moving into the last quarter of the year, this was filled with a number of surprises beginning with Fist Forged in Shadow Torch, a game that comes from a Chinese developer developed as part of Sony's China Hero project which perhaps makes it not so indie. However, it does look great, the action is slick and the exploration fun so it's no wonder that this has a tremendously positive reception and is one of the best of the year. Cicero. Traitor to all partisans, and I'll knock some sense into you! In perhaps the biggest surprise in Metroidvanias in 2021, the review and subsequent release of Metroid Dread was something that no one foresaw since it was something like 19 years since the last in-house developed 2D Metroid game, and for it to be pretty good is just the cherry on top. The gimmick here is that it adds a sort of nemesis-like character from the Resident Evil series known as Emmy Robots which hunt and chase you down while you explore and doubles as a boss fight and the path of upgrades as well. This introduced Samus to a whole new generation outside of Smash Brothers, showcasing the metric parts of Metroidvania, so of course it had to be mentioned, and I do wonder if we get another game in this franchise within the next 3 to 4 years, so who knows, maybe we will get a new 2D Castlevania game sometime down the line as well. A smaller title that you might have missed is Exorcist Fairy, one that, 
like Eastern Exorcist above, also comes to us from a Chinese developer and is a similar kind of game. It's all about exploration and combat as you traverse the interconnected world slaying demons with some gorgeous hand-painted art which is a treat to see in motion. I think I also missed the release of Blast Brigade vs the Evil Legion of Dr. Creed, but this action platformer with Metroidvania style elements is a well-made title that is certainly worth your attention. Think of it as Evil Genius but where you play as the pesky heroes or the Incredibles or any of a number of superhero spy movies where you're infiltrating the secret base of an evil villain on a tropical island. I love the look and design of this, but where it becomes a Metroidvania adjacent title is that you're switching between the four characters, each with their own abilities rather than gaining those same abilities on one character, but minor gripe aside, is a neat one to watch in early access. Into the home stretch with Super Mombo Quest, a pixel art title that is focused on jumping on the heads of enemies and collecting gems and finding secrets, just like a classic 2D platformer. It looks great and is unique, making it an underrated title worth checking out. Another title which has shown up a number of times in quick succession on this channel is Pronti, an underwater game which is unlike anything else on the list. Due to this, the swimming movement and combat does change things significantly and is one of my favourites of the year as well. It also comes to us from a Taiwanese developer, adding another marker on the global map of indie game developers. As is tradition, December is usually a quieter month for new releases, which is actually something that I encourage since releasing your game in this period increases the likelihood that it will get lost among the noise, but some developers still want to try their luck, with Transy Ruby being the title of interest here. It is a gorgeous pixel art title where you play as a cyborg, exploring a strange planet that appeared out of nowhere, with some fantastic chibi character sprites. Metroidvania exploration, strangely enough, involves the use of vehicles which I think looks great and does give off some cave story vibes due to the look. Rounding off 2021 is Aeterna Noctis, another beautifully detailed title that is pretty ambitious in its scope, coming to us from a Spanish developer this time and is certainly worth picking up. I'll be covering this in more detail pretty soon, so I don't want to be repeating myself, but if you love the dark fantasy gothic worlds of classics in the genre, fantastic combat, boss fights and a compelling upgrade system, this is another no-brainer pick, but do note that it does have its share of complaints and rough edges, but not too bad an entry to round us off for the year. All in all, not too bad a year for this genre in 2021, since we did get a new metric game after all and some wonderful titles like Ender Lilies and Delit in Wonder Labyrinth. Looking forward into 2022, let's hope it brings us many more enjoyable games, perhaps even the long anticipated release of Silk Song, where you can find out more in my video linked in the top right. But whatever the case may be, I'm happy to have you along for the ride. For more of the best of 2021, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.